introduction. Right. So I'll uh, kind of speak more about myself and a team member here. Uh, I'm mid-career. Uh, I am an engineer by training. Um, I have my PhD in mechanical and electrical engineering, and then I worked for Hewlett Packard for 12 years. So I know a lot about consumer electronics, and then most recently I was working for Honeywell. Um, and Naomi here is, um, has just graduated from high school, and she's our lead customer, so she's used our product. So she'll be talking about her experience. Um, so maybe you can have a seat if you like. What we are developing here um, is combining technology and art. Um, so we kind of combine artisan design and technology, and that's the name, tech, tech, tech design. And you can see some wireless waves going up at that high. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, the smart jewelry that we're developing, the very first product is an earring. Um, uh, it's, it's difficult to do because the ear is very uh, sensitive to the weight. Um, and uh, so we have to kind of have this function and the aesthetics in a very lightweight form factor. So it has to be very lightweight. So we've developed a smart earring, a Bluetooth earring. And our goal is to pro uh, create more peace of mind and uh, facilitate more healthy living through this connectedness. So the fact that hands-free, uh, the consumer or the customer, the person wearing it, um, can be connected to the internet, it should create more peace of mind because they get information that they need or they would like to have um, real-time, hands-free, wherever they are. So that's kind of our, our uh, vision. Um, so the problem statement, what's life like in this modern day and age for us? We are all very busy. Many of us are very busy uh, in this digital age, you know, juggling uh, multiple responsibilities. And uh, with all these new devices coming up, you know, especially the cell phone, getting more features and now the smart watch, uh, you know, how do we uh, create more convenient and healthier ways to communicate and kind of, you know, be productive, stay be productive, but be safe as well. Uh, I've seen people doing texting something while driving on <laughs> Highway 94. They're driving the car and they've got the phone. It's just, uh, <laughs> so I think <laughs> variables make a lot of sense because it seems like there is need to be real-time connected, uh, you know, even when you're driving on the highway. Um, so that's kind of uh, our, our goal. Um, and right now, uh, we can certainly do calls um, calls. Um, so if you're busy doing something and there's a call that comes in either from your you know, spouse or your boss, somebody, it will come through and you'll be able to receive the call even though the phone's not right there you know, and you're occupied otherwise. Um, so um, it turns out um, hearable uh, category, so the category of products that are called hearables, which are primarily voice interface, um, are projected to grow. Uh, so it's uh, it's this this uh, uh, bar here. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually expected to grow more. This is the smartwatch category, but hearables is expected to grow more. <coughs> um, there is. Um, there is products like there's a German company called Bragi. They are developing um, earbuds that are almost a mini computer. So it's like a small computer uh, that fits in the earbud. And they're primarily targeting it for um, uh, at the exercise, uh, for um, athletics and activity, you know, active lifestyle type uh, applications. Um, but certainly, uh, just hands-free voice interface. It's a very natural interface, and that category is expected to grow. So it's expected to grow fast. Um, so, you know, what are the options right now? Uh, you know, obviously, we hold the cell phone to our ear, um, or you're always on some screen. It's either the laptop screen or the cell phone screen, and there's just a lot of screen time. Um, but the first version of Apple smartwatch, I think it was Rev1, uh, that you had to actually hold your watch up to talk, uh, make the phone call. Um, I think the Rev3, it, 
it doesn't have to be held up to your ear. You can kind of hear it from the, you know, from your natural position. Uh, but still, uh, I think it's just very awkward to uh, conduct, to have phone calls through the wrist. Um, the other option is a wired earbud. So, you know, put the earbud in, there's a wire going to the phone. You know, there is, uh, you know, it can get tangled, it can get snagged in something, so there's some hazards that are created. Um, the wireless earbuds, there are quite a few wireless earbuds uh, in the market now. Um, it turns out everybody's ear is different, so fitting that wireless earbud in the ear canal is not an easy task. Um, so it can fall out or it just feels, you know, causes some pain or discomfort. Um, it does block the ear, so it creates safety hazard. Uh, you know, there have been some accidents reported where people can't hear surroundings and, uh, you know, on the road. Um, and there is concern that the radio frequency wave is so close to the brain. And, you know, and if you're wearing it all the time, the, the, that prolonged exposure, you know, what, what can happen. Uh, so, uh, so those are some of the kind of limitations. Uh, and then the Bluetooth headset is the one that goes over the head and uh, over the ear. Um, the sound quality can be good, but it also, you know, if you don't want to walk around with that thing on your head. <laughs> uh, so what we've developed is the earring, you know, half the population, which is still a very, very large number, uh, does wear uh, jewelry. And uh, it's the, the size of the electronics is such that it can be uh, included or encased in the earring itself. So that's kind of uh, one of the concepts we know we can build. Um, we have some working prototypes here that I'll uh, welcome everybody to come up and try. Um, so basically it has a Bluetooth uh, circuit in it. Uh, the speaker that outputs the sound is over here. It will be on the earlobe. So when the person wears the earring, the speaker's right here on the earlobe. And then the microphone is here facing forward. So all the sounds um, can be received by the microphone. And <clears throat> other sensors can be added. We don't have the sensors added on, but adding the accelerometer is going to be fairly straightforward. Um, so most activity trackers are wrist-worn right now. And the smartwatch has heart rate monitor, and it has accelerometers. But the hand is kind of somewhat separate from the core, the torso. Um, so I know people just move their hand, and it, the activity tracker thinks you've done a lot of exercise when you actually have just moved your hand. So I think something connected to the body may be more accurate. So the accuracy of the activity uh, tracking may be in, in, improved. And the heart rate monitor can be added to the earlobe. It's actually one of the best places to measure heart rate because there's no bone there. So the accuracy of the heart rate can be improved. Uh, this our first uh, product doesn't have the heart rate, but it can be added. So other sensors like temperature sensor can be added. Um, uh, so what does this enable? It enables hands-free. Um, and that's the key feature, the fact that the person can be hands-free and more mobile uh, uh, when, when wearing this product, and then you can kind of more naturally communicate. Um, as many of you may have heard, that the voice interface is becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, Amazon Alexa um, is getting uh, added to many devices, so you can actually ask questions in voice form and get responses in voice form. You don't have to type or, you know, um, type on your phone. Um, and uh, we are working on app, on our first app. Uh, the first app will be uh, to filter out calls so you can define your um, a list of uh, phone numbers where if the phone call is from that list, it'll come through, uh, you know, wherever you are, whenever, wherever, it'll come through. But if it's like some spam call coming from somewhere, it'll get, it, it won't get forwarded to the earring. So you won't be, you know, getting pinged um, all the time, it'll, it, but you will be connected for urgent phone calls. Um, 
so uh, there's less screen time. You know, you stay connected to the internet with less screen and more natural, uh, more natural voice. Um, can all, it's safer because you can be aware of the surrounding. You can hear what's going on around you um, and still be connected. So the speaker can uh, you know, deliver that information. Uh, there's less exposure to the radio frequency wave because it's not in the ear, ear canal right by the brain, but uh, you know, a, a inch or two away. Um, we are a bunch of uh, women trying to do a lot, and so we're designing it with that in mind. Uh, so it can be used in the car, you know, at work, at home, uh, and it's kind of seamless. So you're wearing it, so you know, it can be, uh, you know, getting into your car, walking to your cube, or walking to your whatever the workplace is, or walking to your home. Um, and we also try and keep in mind how to make it kind of. Uh, clean tech, where it's easier to refresh and reuse, uh, because we could have some precious metal on here, maybe even some precious uh, gemstones. So how do we make it uh, repair, easy to repair and reuse? Um, so I, I, I want to stop here. Uh, we have Naomi. She's <laughs> our very first customer. Um, uh, her. Uh, yeah, her grandfather is part of our team, so he, he does some of our design work. Um, so Naomi's used the product. Um, we gave her one in November, and so she's going to tell us about her experience. She's not an engineer, so you'll hear what the customer experience was like. Yeah, so I actually met Rama through my grandfather, Steve Fighton, who is another engineer in the company. I've been using these for a few months. I got them back in November, and they're actually really fun to use. I've liked them a lot. It's been really fun to use them. You basically just connect it to the Bluetooth on Siri and you can like, talk and speak, you can hear all your calls, all your music. I use it basically throughout the day with anything I use, usually with like headphones, but it gets rid of like problems with like, the whole headphone cord and like getting stuck on your arms and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay. Sure, sure, yeah. So you just hold on the button, they'll flash blue, and then you can turn on the Bluetooth and then connect it to the Technicon thing, and then put it in your ear, and then you can turn up all the volume and everything, and it all connects through the little speaker and the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think the volume adjustment is through the phone, so you can kind of adjust the volume, make sure it's you know audible, um, and then um, to I have an Android phone. And from Android, I can say, OK, Google, we, we go in that listening mode on the Android phone, can uh, tap the mic symbol, there's a mic symbol, and then it goes in listening mode. So it says Google is listening. And then you can say, OK, Google, call Naomi Fenton, for example. She's in my address book. And it does. Google goes and calls up Naomi Fenton. It's all um, hands-free voice. And it'll ring Naomi, and when she responds, I can hear back. So if I have my hearing, and she, or if somebody else has their phone, or they have their earbud, uh, you know, when you go through the phone, um, so it can maybe. Yeah. So it's uh, you know about the size where it's comfortable to wear. It's five grams or less. Uh, the guidelines are jewelry has to be. Earring jewelry has to be seven grams or less, so we are well below the maximum limit, five grams or less. And then uh, small enough, you know, with hair, it's, you know, you can show it. Um, we're starting to work on the more artistic design, so we're working with, uh, we're partnering with some jewelry designers, a couple of them, and they'll be doing more jewelry design. And we're looking at other form factors, so it's it's uh, the drop earring. We're also looking at hoops <coughs> and stud earrings. So we're looking at other, and then. Within that form factor, there's there's a whole range of designs that can be done. Um, you know, a whole range of materials that can be done. So we're starting to uh, uh, we're starting to develop that. Um, and then uh, there's apps. Uh, so because this thing is Bluetooth connected to the internet, there's a lot there's a lot of apps that are possible. Uh, it can be a mix of voice and text. You know, the, the screen. It can be a, uh, the app can be a mix of the screen and voice interface. Um, so we we start to think of use cases um, and you know what sort of app to develop. Um, uh, 
uh, and we're working on that. And then, um, let's see. But as is, I think it's still useful as is. And uh, can I pull up my website at this point? And, uh, Yeah, so this is our website, httpstechdesign.com. Um, and uh, so we did our company. We've been through some of the kind of uh, accelerator type uh, programs. There's a pre-line uh, group in New York. They do more kind of fashion, social trend setting. We went through their accelerator, uh, virtual accelerator. And uh, idea just is an incubator here in Minneapolis, Excel MN. Uh, they had a, uh, a program. We went through that. Um, then Clean Tech Open, the accelerator. We are partnering with Arrow. Uh, they're a global electronics supplier. Um, and then IoT Fuse, Internet uh, of Things, uh, Fuse organization. We're part of that. But you can buy it. Um, so, like we are showing, uh, these are functional. We can build them in quantities of. 10 to 100, um, so please, if I welcome and invite you to you know, be one of our early customers and uh, try it, certainly give us lots of feedback and help us out. Very good. <laughs> because it's a local <laughs> company. And then uh, I think, uh, so this is actually a, a video and uh, it's on our website, it should, Play. I, I think we should probably get the Q&A. Okay, there. Okay, all right. So I just wanted to show you the video. This is some of the use cases. <coughs> so in all these situations can be connected to the internet. And clearly there are times when we, you know, even Though our hands are not free, we still need to talk. We still need to be connected. Yeah. All right, let's give these guys a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? Um, because it's not plugged in your ear canal, do you know the decibel rating of ambient noise where you can't hear what's coming through the Bluetooth? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we, we looked into that quite a bit, you know, what is the optimum volume, yeah. um, or the, you know, sound volume, and I think, uh, you know, we, we want to have the capacity to have high volume, but then it, there's a trade-off with the battery runtime, because there's a rechargeable battery. I think you're misunderstanding, sorry. Okay. The ambient noise. Yeah. So the noise yeah. that's outside. Yeah. So, yeah, in a very noisy setting, there will be trouble. Yeah, you won't be able to hear. If it's very noisy setting, if it's a you know, crowded train station or a crowded <laughs> uh, bar, yeah, probably you won't be able to hear it as much. So they've done decibel study tests, you know what that is? 10, 5, 15? Where you can't hear? Uh, yeah, so we're not designing the product for very noisy settings yet. Um, we are designing it to be, you know, clearly audible in normal settings, but it's not very noisy, and it is uh, very clearly audible. It's about 100 dB uh, maximum volume, and uh, it's cl clearly things are clearly audible um, if it's not too noisy. But you know, I don't know. Maybe they, we can do noise filtering. You know, there can be some noise filtering technology as well. <coughs> um, uh, like I was saying, with 100 dB, if you start just over designing it and have the speaker be 150 dB, dB, we start drawing on the battery, and then the battery run time is less, and then it gets heavier, so it's more difficult. You know, uh, uncomfortable to wear. So there's like a trade-off space. So we want to design it for use scenarios which are more, you know, common mm -hmm. than, than some uh, more uh, difficult use scenarios than that cause the product to uh, have certain uh, trade-offs that make it almost infeasible, then the product starts becoming infeasible. Other questions? Got it. Um, as far as competition, what's your competition now or do you see any from Apple Samsung, Fitbit, Garmin, any of those smartwatch people? Yeah, I think uh, the reason not too many people are in this space is, first is jewelry. 
So half the population, uh, and so I think then second, a lot of the engineers and all are, um, are men, so they probably just don't, you know, this product concept is just not very uh, relatable. Um, and then I think in smart jewelry, there are some companies out there, especially smart uh, startups. So there's one called Ringly. Uh, they've done a ring, uh, which is just a buzzer, um, Bluetooth buzzer, so it notifies them that something's come in the phone. Um, a Ringly does a ring, then there's uh, some doing bracelets, so bracelet form. Um, there's only one other company that I know of that's doing an earring. Um, uh, and uh, they're in New York, they started about the same time as us. Um, so I think your ring form factor, I don't know of a whole lot of others. But I think uh, Apple and Samsung, I doubt they'll go in the jewelry segment. Okay. Other questions? Okay, time for maybe one or two more. Yep. How long does the charge last? I mean, how long does it take to charge and how yeah. long does it last? Yeah. So the battery size that we have right now is, I think, about uh, 70 mAh milliamp hours, and uh, with normal use, it's about three to six hours. With very uh, uh, heavy use, it will be probably three to six hours. But there is two earrings, so you could go to the next one, so then it becomes 2x the runtime. So, right now, only one of them is speaker and power? Yeah, right now, at, yeah, one, one of them, one so speaker the, is active. So, you could actually. Uh, yeah. Yep. What's, what's the distance from the um, device to the ear canal? What's the maximum range? Yeah, um, so I think the ear lobe to the ear drum, mm -hmm. I think it's about an inch, inch and a half. But I mean, how, how long, just out of curiosity, could this be? Oh, yeah, the ear, yeah. Ear. Yeah, so Aside we go with the, the yeah, so if the, with the dangler earrings, I've seen, earrings that are two, three inches long. And still, it would be very audible? So the speaker sits right here on the earlobe. We, uh, the rest of the circuitry is you oh, know, oh. dangling from it. The speaker's right on the earlobe. <coughs> so the speaker's only you know, as far as the earlobe is. Very good. All right, let's give Ron a hand of applause.